I'd like to talk to you today about what an impact nutritional excellence can make for you and people around the world. We can win the war against disease, we can have healthier nations. Right now, we are spreading American fast food companies and processed foods are spreading all over the world. And people are becoming more overweight, more obese, having more heart attacks, more diabetes, more strokes, and even more cancer. The good news is, is that nutritional science has advanced to the point where we can have people not have heart attacks. We can win the war against cancer. We can stop people from having strokes. And as they get become more elderly, they don't have to become demented in their later years. And in healthy populations with low medical costs, with, with a dramatically more successful and happier population without the fear of these diseases. And what we've learned, the secrets that we've learned to protect ourselves have to do with nutrients. And there are two types of nutrients. There are macronutrients, and the macronutrients contain calories, and those are called fat, carbohydrate, and protein. And if you eat too many macronutrients, too much fat, too much carbohydrate, and too much protein, we can become overweight, and we can promote aging and promote heart attacks and strokes. Now, food also contains micronutrients, and micronutrients do not contain calories. They're things like vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals. About 80 years ago, in 1930, scientists first discovered 14 vitamins and about 20 different minerals, and everybody said, wow, this is great. We can help people live longer and help people be much healthier. And what happened between 1935 and 2005 is that heart attack rates went up all over the world, stroke rates went up, and cancer rates went up every single year for 70 years straight. We didn't realize until about 15 years ago that the third type of micronutrients called phytochemicals were missing because the third type of micronutrients called phytochemicals are not found in processed foods and they're not found in animal products but they're found in fruits and vegetables. So when we thought that we could take processed foods and add a few vitamins and minerals to it or take a vitamin supplement and think we're getting enough, we were mistaken because now we know that every tomato has a thousand different nutrients in it. Every head of cabbage, every piece of lettuce, every cucumber, every bean or berry or sprout has hundreds, even thousands of nutrients that are so important to protect our precious health. So if we sum up what we've learned in the last 15 years in the field of nutritional science, we've realized that we have to eat a diet that's very high in nutrients, very high in micronutrients, including not just the ones we discovered 70 years ago, but all the new nutrients that we're discovering, all the new findings, that full symphony of nutrients we're finding that exists in natural fruits and vegetables, beans, nuts, and seeds. So the first thing I'm saying here, I'm making the point that as a nation, countries all over the world have made tremendous mistakes as far as protecting the health of their population. The mistake we made is we thought that we could eat anything. We could eat white flour. We could eat bread, we could eat pasta, we could eat sugar, we could drink soda all day. It doesn't have to be high in micronutrients. And then we could just take a vitamin pill and be okay. And we found out it doesn't work. We actually have to eat real food with, with a climate to grow healthy foods and farmers that grow fresh fruits and vegetables and a, and a homeland that has availability of peppers and tomatoes and cabbage and lettuce and sesame seeds. You have the availability to eat superfoods, and these superfoods could protect us against chronic, degenerative, and dangerous diseases, preventing medical tragedies. So you have to really eat these foods. So let's talk about this for a minute. Because we're saying here is that we have to eat a diet high in nutrients and lower in calories. So the first thing I'm saying to you is that animal products like chicken and meat and fish and eggs should not be the major portion of a diet. A healthy diet has to be plant-based. Most of what we eat has to get these phytochemicals from natural plant foods. So pasta, white bread, and white rice does not have in it the phytochemicals and antioxidants. In those foods, there's no significant amount of vitamin E and vitamin K and folate 
and bioflavonoids and lignans and plant sterols and all these phytochemicals and other carotenoids that protect against disease. In other words, what I'm saying is that processed foods, drinking soda, having sugar, having white rice and pasta and white bread are not high nutrient foods. Those are not going to be the foods to protect your precious health because they're not rich in micronutrients. And likewise, animal products like chicken and meat also do not have the same nutrients. They're also missing the vitamin E, vitamin K, the folate, the bioflavonoids, the lignans, the phytochemicals, the carotenoids, the same nutrients that the processed foods are missing. Worldwide, we're seeing populations get most of their calories from processed foods and animal products, and they're not eating fruits and vegetables, then what are they missing? Of course, they're missing those antioxidants and the phytochemicals that are present in plant foods. And instead of going to doctors and getting um, pills to take to lower your blood pressure, and instead of taking medication to take away chest pains, and then having surgeries on people's hearts or procedures to make the blood to flow better, those do not make people live longer. The most powerful intervention, the most powerful medicine, is what you can do in your own home, in your own kitchens, in your own gardens, and what you can do with your own life to protect your precious health. It's not what, what doctors can do for you, medications and surgeries. What I'm saying today is that we all are in this together. If we all eat a diet, which we call it a plant-based, high-nutrient diet, we look to eat more of the foods that are highest in nutrients. And the foods that are highest in nutrients, including these micronutrients I'm talking about, are green vegetables. Green vegetables win the awards because they have more nutrients per calorie than any other food. In other words, an animal product like a piece of chicken or a piece of meat is not high in nutrients per calorie. It gives you lots of calories, but not lots of micronutrients. Now take a piece of broccoli or some cabbage or kale that also is high in protein. Because don't forget, green vegetables are high in protein. That's how come gorillas, hippopotamus, rhinoceros, elephant, and giraffes get so big because they eat green vegetables and eat a lot of protein. And green vegetables are high in protein. But here you have the protein packaged with lots of micronutrients, with the phytochemicals, with the antioxidants, with the things that make the body age slower and we keep our youthfulness, our vigor, and our good health into later years. And if we look at the healthiest people around the whole world, and the pockets of civilization where people live the longest, it's always the people that eat the most vegetables live the longest. And let's touch on certain types of foods we want to include in our diet for optimal health. Number one is beans. Beans like kidney beans, navy beans, lentils, split peas. Beans have a, something in them called resistant starch. And resistant starch doesn't raise the glucose level, it's broken down by bacteria in the colon. As the bacteria in the colon change the resistant starch into short-chain fatty acids. And those fatty acids protect us against colon cancer. Beans promote weight loss. They give us energy. They're high in protein. And they protect us against cancer. And they're linked in the scientific studies to an enhancement of longevity in elderly people. Number two, green vegetables. To be on a healthy diet, we have to eat some raw vegetables and some cooked vegetables. We have to eat green vegetables. Lettuce, salad, cucumbers, cabbage, the broccoli family, all those green vegetables have um, specific compounds that have been shown to protect against breast cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, and of course heart attacks and strokes. They're longevity producing foods. If we mix the greens and the beans now with nuts and seeds, right? almonds, cashews, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, they have almost magical superfoods, protective compounds, that prevent against cardiac arrhythmias, irregular heartbeats. They lower your cholesterol. They make people live longer. They prevent sudden cardiac death. They stabilize the brain. And the healthy fats and seeds and nuts increase the absorption of nutrients to the vegetables and the beans. They also make the protein very complete. So it's not about just eating less fat. It's eating about more of the whole food, healthy fats from nuts and seeds. Now, nuts and seeds contain a special compound called plant sterols. And these sterols have been shown to lower cholesterol levels and protect against heart attacks. But they also have a dramatic effect to protect against cancer as well. 
So what I do is we take some sesame seeds, and then maybe we'll mix it with an orange, and then make a dressing or a dip to put on a salad, right? Or we'll throw some seeds and nuts with some tomato sauce, and we'll make a dressing, we'll make some kind of dressing or a sauce. In other words, using nuts and seeds as part of your dressings and dips is a very important part of excellent nutrition. Last, fresh fruit like oranges and berries and kiwis also contains various compounds, phenols and anthocyanins, special compounds that protect against various cancers and are important for good health. And lastly, of course, whole grains like sorghum, wild rice, brown rice, whole grain rices, whole oats, whole barley. Think whole grains, not processed white flour, not white rice and white flour, but using more whole grains. So we know now that the more vegetables and fruits and beans and nuts and seeds eaten, the longer people live and the lower the risk of heart attacks and strokes and cancers. Now, in addition to preventing these chronic diseases later on in life, it also can help people have better function in school, more attention, more alertness, more protection against diseases like, like influenza, like the flu. When we have the right kind of nutrients in our body, we're not going to get sick as often. So we have to appeal to our governors and our government, our educators and our teachers and our farmers. We have to all work together as a team to bring healthy food into the schools, to bring healthy plant foods into our homes. We're not talking about adding a little bit of fruits and vegetables to your present diet. We're talking about making fruits and vegetables then the major portion of your diet, and then we'll have a healthy nation, and then we'll have a healthy population to live a long life free of medical tragedies. To conclude, we have a, new, a unique opportunity in human history. This is a blessing. We have science and information that can enable us to live better and to live healthier and to live longer than ever before in human history. Let's take advantage of, your, of the natural bounty of the land and have, and have one of the healthiest places in the whole world.